reasons to use a drip irrigation system in your garden. It will save you time, water and money. Using a drip irrigation system is far more efficient than using a hose pipe or a sprinkler system because it delivers water right to the base of the plant, which is precisely where it's needed. And if you hook it up to an automated timer, you won't even need to be in your garden to turn it on and off. You can install drip irrigation at ground level throughout newly planted borders and vegetable patches. Or you can attach it to a fence and run it among your containers and hanging baskets. Installing a drip system is fairly straightforward and you won't need any specialist tools or knowledge. But it's worth familiarising yourself with the pieces before you start. Here are the components of your system. When you choose a location for your system, check to see that you have enough of the large supply hose to run back to the tap. In order to maintain sufficient pressure within the system, it's best to make sure that this doesn't run for more than 50 metres. Begin by attaching the computer control unit to the tap and then add the pressure regulator. If you don't have a computer control unit, then just attach the pressure regulator straight to the tap. The main supply pipe then connects to the pressure regulator. You may find it helpful to soften the supply pipe in hot water for a few minutes before attaching it. Now you can begin to create your network of water pipes. First of all, lay out the large supply pipe. Don't try to bend the tube as this will restrict the water flow. If you need to go around a corner, then use strong scissors or secateurs to cut the pipe and add an elbow connector. If you want to add another piece of supply tube at a 90 degree angle, then you can use a T-bar connector. Most importantly, once you've created your pipe network, make sure that you seal off the end of the supply pipe to prevent water pouring out of the system. Simply take one of the end pieces, put it onto the end of the pipe before folding the pipe over to secure it into place. Next you can start to add the microtubing, which will direct water from the supply pipe to the individual containers. Cut each piece to the required length. Punch a hole in the supply pipe, then screw a tube adapter into the hole. Use the bottom of the red hole punch to help you with this. It's important to make sure that tube adapters are inserted into the supply pipe at a 90 degree angle to prevent the system from leaking. If you make a mistake, then fill unwanted holes with blanking plugs. Next, attach a microtube to each tube adapter. Next you need to attach the drippers to the end of the microtubing. Of course if you're running a system through a border along the ground then you may decide you don't need the microtubing, in which case attach the drippers directly into the supply pipe. Finally you can secure the main pipe in place. If you're laying it on the ground in a border then use the large stakes. If you want to attach it to a wall use the white wall clips provided. You can hold the microtubing in place with the smaller stakes. So now your system's ready to go. Program your timer and then turn on the tap to check that everything's running properly. The dripper nozzles are like mini sprinklers, but you can adjust the flow rate by turning them. Now once your system's set up, you'll need to give it a try a few times to get an idea of how long to run it for. And this will all depend on the type of plants you're growing, the size of your containers, and even what the weather's like. But you'll soon get a feel for it. So while your neighbours are frantically running around their garden with a watering can, all you need to do is turn on a tap, sit back and relax.